I'm Kate Costa with New Venture Mentor, and here's your weekly dose of the latest news in the world of entrepreneurship. It was a busy week, and we've got a mixed bag of good news and bad news for the entrepreneurship community in the United States this week. Unfortunately, according to a Business Dynamics Statistics report, small firms continue to make up a smaller and smaller percentage of all firms in this country, dropping from a high of 13% back in the 80s down to only 8% as of the latest data. Now, this isn't a case of just a few populous states dragging the total percentage down either. The declining trend is seen in every single one of our states across the country. On the bright side, however, small businesses seem to be becoming more profitable, according to the National Federation of Independent Businesses Monthly Index of Small Business Indicators. According to the index, despite the fact that profits are still down overall as small businesses continue to try to survive the recession and its fallout, the overall earnings picture is the best it's been in five years. Additionally, despite small businesses' declining share of the overall United States company landscape, the good old U.S. of A. is still ranked the number one most entrepreneurial nation in the world by the annual Global Entrepreneurship and Development Index. In support of this entrepreneurial spirit, Chase and Living Social have teamed up to launch the new Mission Small Business Grant Program with the goal of helping small businesses expand. The program pledges $3 million to provide 6 to 12 small businesses a maximum of a quarter million dollars each to help them grow. If you've been in business for at least two years and have fewer than 100 employees, you can head over to missionsmallbusiness.com and enter your company. You'll need to be able to explain why your business is unique, how you get back to the community within which you're located, and have a plan for utilizing the funds. Now, even if your company doesn't qualify, you can get involved by voting for your favorite small business. For each pledge of support, Chase will add $5 to the grant pool, so you can contribute even if you're not a Mr. or Ms. Moneybags yourself. In other news, a new University of Utah study confirms, once again, that women need to work extra hard to be taken seriously in the business world. When asked to evaluate fictional companies and to determine whether or not they represented a good investment as each approached its IPO, male-founded and male-led companies were perceived as more attractive investments, even though these fictional, fictional companies had identical financials and the founders or CEOs had identical personal qualifications. What's particularly upsetting is that the experiment was conducted using second-year MBA students, so the average age of these people is likely somewhere in the late 20s, maybe early 30s. That means that this isn't a problem of the good old boys network of days gone by, but is a bias right now, even with the younger generation in the working world. Now, noting that this problem of raising capital for women holds true at every level, from the seed stage all the way up to the IPO, the researchers have started calling the phenomenon a green ceiling, the entrepreneur's version of the glass ceiling. On a happier note, the House of Representatives voted to reauthorize the Export-Import Bank and increase the federal agency's credit exposure limit, and the Senate is expected to follow. The Export-Import Bank provides financing and insurance to help U.S. exporters sell their products overseas, and many of those exporters are small businesses that rely on the Export-Import Bank's assistance to operate. According to Tom McCracken, President and CEO of the National Small Business Association, for many small businesses, XM Bank isn't just a lender of last resort, it's the lender of only resort. That means that a failure to reauthorize the bank could put many small companies out of business. So an end to the ongoing turmoil and ambiguity about its reauthorization will lift a heavy weight from the shoulders of many small business owners. And wrapping up, how could I resist leaving you without mentioning yet another rankings list and giving Texas another week of bragging rights? This week's list comes from a partnership between the Kauffman Foundation and Thumbtack.com and ranks small business friendliness as ranked by small business owners from across the country. It takes into account things like licensing requirements, which don't necessarily show up on some of the other lists we've talked about and which small business owners say are twice as important as the tax environment. It seems that no matter how you slice it though, Texas does well and California does poorly. In the top three for the third list in a row is Texas at number two, beaten out by Idaho and followed by Oklahoma. California, performing poorly yet again, took the last place spot on the list. 
That's it for entrepreneurship news this week. Remember to let the SEC know how you feel about the JOBS Act's implementation by clicking the link below the video. And subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter to get the latest entrepreneurship news as well as tips, tricks, and tutorials to help your small business grow.